Hello everybody and welcome to yet another video of Mad About Sports and today you know we are going to be talking about cricket and it's about the WTC yes as you heard it right because the WTC final squad of Team India has been announced and of course this is about analyzing Indian squad for the WTC final as we build up and as we are just a month and few days away from that coveted final which will be played in oval between Australia and India. Remember, these two oppositions just met a couple of months ago in the Border Gavaskar Trophy, where India took the series 2-1. Now, it's once again, these two teams are going to meet, and this time around for the WTC. Because last time, India were the runners up, and India just came very close and just couldn't make it. This time, they have a different opposition, Australia in England at a neutral venue. And of course, India playing the second consecutive final. So we're going to be talking about the score to start off with because there are some interesting names, interesting inclusions, interesting exclusions as well. So we are going to be talking about it because the debate is definitely there as to who should have been included and why are certain players not included as well. So let's talk, let's bring the score up on the screen straight up uh, without any further ado. Uh, let's look at this, right? Because we, as we all knew, Rohit Sharma will be captaining the squad as Rohit Sharma is fit and fine to go. And we have Shubman Gill up there and Chiteshwar Pujara. Let's talk about Chiteshwar Pujara to start off with because he's been having a phenomenal time in county cricket so far. He's led the county of one of his county team already. He scored 100 there and he's already in England. So he's a player with a lot of experience playing in England and also his current form has been phenomenal. So he's going to enjoy batting on those surfaces because he spent enough amount of time there. He goes to play in county championship almost every season. And as he's already there and is also leading a county team there, you should you should you should definitely say Chitesh Pujara is a is a no brainer in that squad and also Virat Kohli because remember before God bought the Gavaskar Trophy there was a lot of questions on Virat Kohli's form in Test cricket there were a lot of doubts as to whether is he looking at Test cricket and whether should he be continuing there because a lot of other youngsters were knocking on the door but Virat Kohli certainly silenced the critics with that 187 which he had against Australia and Ahmedabad and he's looked to be in tremendous form overall in his cricket in all three formats as well so Virat Kohli is there. Now, next one is the most interesting name, isn't it? Because uh, the debates and everything is around the one man, Ajinkya Rahane. Remember when we did the live stream, we did uh, give heaps of praise for Ajinkya Rahane, the batter who has really turned it around. And you have to say he's had a phenomenal Ranji Trophy as well, where he scored uh, where he scored at an average of 57 in the Ranji Trophy for Mumbai. But more than everything, what made the selectors take Ajinkya Rahane? Is it the IPL form or is it just the Ranji Trophy form? Now, this is a spark of debate which we will be talking about further in our video because that is definitely a segment which we'll have to talk about isn't it but let's talk about the wicket keeper section we've got kl rahul and kona Bharat. uh kona Bharat did keep for india the border gavaskar trophy you can say he was slightly underwhelming with the bat but with as a keeper he's one of the best glove men out there in the country and you have to back that kona Bharat could be the preferred option especially in conditions where the ball is going to move around a little bit but for the balance of the team can india go with kl rahul so which we will also talk about further in our video but if you look at the all-rounder section, definitely they've gone with Ravichandran Ashwin, Ravindra Jadeja and Akshar Patel. Those are three spinners as well, which will be playing for Team India. Now, we will talk about the possible playing 11 and Shardul Thakur as well, which is an interesting pick. Uh, Shardul Thakur wasn't part of India's Border Gavaskar Trophy score. But then in English conditions last time when India toured England in 2021, remember Shardul Thakur played a brilliant knock in oval and helped India to win that test match. So... One of the reasons why Shardul Thakur is preferred is batting ability and also his ability to swing the ball a little bit and pick up those wickets in crucial stages in the middle overs can be one of the reasons why he's included in the team. Now, if you talk about the bowlers, India have gone with Mohamed Shami, Mohamed Siraj, who are the two, two, two bowlers in an extreme amount of form, Umesh Yadav and Jadav Nadkar. Now, the question over here is Umesh Yadav's form, isn't it? Because Umesh Yadav has not really looked the part in IPL in the recent games and also in the, in the game which he got in Ahmedabad, he definitely was looking out of rhythm. But the interesting pick is whether India are going to play J.D. Unathkart or not because J.D. Unathkart has been a phenomenal, especially in conditions where there's been a lot of help. And also with the left-hand angle, with a lot of experience, J.D. Unathkart could be just the wild card which India can play, which we will talk about now. Let's talk about the first debate in question, isn't it? Uh, let's talk about Ajinkya Rahane because Ajinkya Rahane, a phenomenal player. We've seen that over the years, led India to the Border Gavaskar Trophy win in 2021. Um, has done a lot of things good for India over the years as a batter. You could say Ajin Karahane was India's one of the major overseas batters who could go outside India and score runs alongside Virat Kohli for a long bit of time. Now, since 2018, you can say Ajin Karahane hasn't been really consistent. He has had a lot of slums. He's had more off days and good days. So, one of the reasons why he was outshot of the score after the South Africa season in 2022 was primarily because 
His form was not really great. He did not really help the team to get out of jailbreak situations, which as a middle order batter, you really want to do. And when he was excluded as a team, the player who came to replace him, which was Shreyas Iyer, really grabbed the chance with two, ha- two hands and he really started scoring once. And he helped India to get out of these jailbreaking situations. Played some match-winning knocks for India in some tougher conditions, especially that knock in Bangladesh in the second test match. That really comes into your mind. The knock which he played against, Na- against New Zealand in Nagpur. The knock which he played against Sri Lanka on a rank tournament in Bangalore. So these are one of the reasons why you prefer Shreyas Iyer and also his counter-attacking ability. You can say Shreyas Iyer did not have the ability to play short ball as convincingly as one could really want him to play. But his ability to really survive, put that counter punch, have the character in the middle order, really brought the refreshing bit in the Indian change room. And also him alongside Rishabh Pant really built a good duo in that lower middle order of team India at number five and number six. That really helped India to put up really uh, daunting scores as well at a very good rate. And that's something which a lot of teams are following. In England, you have seen a bear show do that in the middle order, play the counter-attacking knocks alongside Ben Stokes. And that's, that was something of a very similar sort what we were getting with Rishabh Pant and Shreyas Iyer in the middle order for Team India. Now, the question is Ajin Kerahane. Let's pull out some of his stats, isn't it? Because it's so important to look at these stats before you judge a player in test format. He's been, he's been having a phenomenal IP. He's got 200, 209 runs already at a strike rate of 199. But let's look at his test form in the recent past. And especially from 2018 onwards. 2018, you can see, had a very fairly decent year. 30, average of 30. 2019 was was considerably his best year, where he scored at an average of 71. And since then, if you look, the average has just dipped and dipped and dipped. He's got a better on an average of 2020, he had an average of 38, uh, which includes 100, which he scored in Melbourne in a winning course, which you have to say was one of the best overseas 100 after the 36 all-out in Adelaide. He played a captain's knock in Melbourne to help India out of that situation and give the team that confidence at 112, which he scored in 2020. In 2021, he really had a he he, he played a couple of really good knocks. Uh, you have to say one of the knocks which he played in Lords in that winning course with partnership with Pujara when team looked a little bit of dicey when situation was not really going their way. That was a scratchy knock, but that indeed was effective in the larger course of things. But overall, if you look at that performance in 2021, was really below par, and he just had an average of 20. In 2020, he just played a couple of knocks there, uh, four innings, but an average of 17. Not really helped India in that. Test matches in Johannesburg and Cape Town as well. So, um, definitely not great signs, you can say so. Ajin Rahane, remember, Ajin Rahane was removed from vice captaincy in South Africa, if you guys remember, in 2021, 2022, rather. Uh, that's when, you know, Team India really came heavy on him. You know, really wanted to move away from Ajin Rahane, the captain. Had future plans by saying that to be his last series. And since then, he never never really made to Team India. Yeah, he he went on to a uh, captain Mumbai in Ranji Trophy inside Musakir Trophy as well. He's been having a good time in Ranji Trophy, you can say. So he's not been re- having the best of times. You have to say his other teammates like Prithvi Shaw and Salfras Khan has really lit it up for Mumbai. That you know, Ajin Kanahan's performance has been really overshadowed by these two youngsters who has been really coming off the ranks. But Ajin Kanahan has been slightly underwhelming so in the red ball format in the recent past. He's not been he's not been playing those match winning knocks. But now with those knocks which he played in IPL, where he's been Playing that fearless brand of cricket where he's gone out there, well, you know, hell for leather from ball one, you know, play with a much more positive intent. Maybe that would have made selectors to believe that Ajinkya Rahane, with that experience as well in England, with that experience of playing for India in a situation like a WTC final. Remember, Ajinkya Rahane has played some match winning innings under pressure for Team India. Let's go back to Johannesburg 2018, where he was not part of the squad in two, two of the first two games where he was not part of the squad in the Durban Test Match, in the Cape Town Test Match. And India were trailing in that Series 2-0. And he was brought into that team in Johannesburg on a very spicy wicket where the ball was doing all sorts of things, where he played a counter-attacking knock of 48. But that's still going to be fresh in a lot of our memories because that was a very good knock by an Indian batter from overseas soil in a pitch which was deemed to be very dangerous for the batters for their liking. So... You have to say, Ajinkya Rahan has played some important knocks. And the Melbourne knock, as I mentioned before, Lord's knock in 2014. Uh, you know, Melbourne knock in 20, uh, 2014 as well, where he, along with Virat Kuli, played, some, played a brilliant partnership there. So he has played those important knocks in overseas conditions time and time again. And maybe you can also have the Lord's knock in 2021 as well, where he, along with Pujara, played a brilliant partnership out there in the middle. Now, Ajinkya Rahan, with that experience of, mid, uh, experience of domestic cricket under his belt, uh, played a good one season in domestic cricket. Maybe would have made him clear a lot of his doubts. Now he's point. Maybe he's now in a point of saying his career where he'll have to possibly not think a lot about a position in the place, not wanting to make a comeback, just go out there and enjoy the cricket. 
Now, that's when you really realize for a lot of these players that you can go out there and enjoy the cricket rather than really putting a lot of pressure on yourself. And that's the kind of Ajinkya Rahane what we have gotten to see in IPL. It's a very un unlike Ajinkya Rahane kind of approach what we have seen of Ajinkya Rahane in this year's IPL. And that's also primarily because of the setup he's playing in. Chennai Super Kings a phenomenal setup which really backs the players, which really makes players understand their potential and really you know, gives a free mind in players' mind to go out there and express themselves. So these are factors which we need to consider when we talk about Ajinkya Rahane going into the WTC final. Is it a futuristic move? Definitely not. But maybe for a one-off test match, considering India have got a lot of injury issues, no Rishabh Pan, no Shreyas Ayer, and now with KL Rao's form also being slightly dicey, you had to go with someone like Ajinkya Rahane because of the form which is shown in IPL, because of the because of, because of the mindset he is in right now. And remember, he's the leader as well. He was he was he captain India, and he was to be the next captain in line after Virat Kohli. But because of his form, because of his inability to maintain his position in the team, he had to be removed from his white captaincy role as well. So now this is a very interesting thing. So he brings a leadership trait as well. He's an experienced campaigner, played in English conditions before. You can say his English records are not the greatest, but definitely something to be reckoned with when you're going for a one-off test match against an Australian team. And he's got a very good record in Australia, generally. So that's that's one of the reasons why Ajin Karahan has been preferred. Now, let's talk about KL Rahul, right? Because uh, a lot of people are debating about KL Rahul's position in the team. But remember, KL Rahul has scored once in England in the recent past. But the 2021 series, KL Rahul did score 100 in Lords, did score important ones in OL as well for Team India in those winning costs. So you have to say KL Rahul has not done anything wrong to be outside of the team as well. In test format especially, uh, you have to say in, in the Border Gavaskar Trophy, he was out of ease, looked out of sorts, especially opening the batting and the mid-series, he was replaced by Shubman Gill. But then maybe the Indian selectors are looking at him as a wicket-keeping option over Kona Bharat because Kona Bharat's wicket-keeping form was great, but his batting form wasn't really great to give Indian team that confidence of someone like Arisha Pond at number six. Now, when you have a Srikar Bharat, Kona Srikar Bharat at number six, but that kind of, you can say to an extent, you know, you know, thins your batting order. And that's maybe the reason why selectors are possibly looking at a KL Rahul. Remember, it's been made very clear that KL Rahul will be keeping wickets for India in the 2023 ODI World Cup. Hence, he's been keeping wickets for India in the ODI format in the recent past as well. So, maybe as an ODI keeper, has done so far so good. And also maybe batting in the middle order. Remember, his middle order record overall in his career has been phenomenal. If you look at his T20 record in as a middle order bat, he scored runs there. As a test batter, he's not really batted in middle order just as yet. But as an ODI batter, batting a number five, number six for Team India, he's been able to play a role which you need a player to play. You know, steady the ship in more of these occasions. Remember the season against Australia, recent past, where India were in trouble, where India lost five wickets. He steadied the ship there. The squeeze against Sri Lanka in earlier on in, the, in, the, uh, in January. He came at number six, number five, steadied the ship, played that important knock. Maybe KL Rahul's career could be revived as a test batter in the middle order. Maybe it could be a long-term number six, number five for you. Maybe maybe not, maybe not. don the gloves for a longer period of time, but as an option for sure. Because he's got the skill set, maybe for this one-off test match, to give that extra bit of balance with that batting ability as well. And also with his experience batting in England, because he's got the technique to do it. It's just a mental frame of things which is really holding him back. Maybe once he's able to clear it out, if he has a very good season with Lucknow Super Giants, if Lucknow go on to win the IPL, let's just think about it hypothetically, that if Lucknow goes on to win this year's IPL, then you're going to be talking about Kale Rahul, who's going to come into the WTC final with a lot more positive framework, who's going to be going out there to play a lot more freely as a batter. And that's what you need from Kale Rahul. I know we've been talking about this term, Kale Rahul should be playing freely, freely for a long bit of time. But then it's about time we realize the KL Rahul can be unleashed as a batter if he goes out there and plays freely because that's the best of KL Rahul we have always seen. And even in the test format, in the practice games in 2021, we have all seen KL Rahul come, come and walk in the middle order score runs. KL Rahul, remember, before 2021, the England series, he was chosen in that team as a middle order bat. But right before the first test match, Mayank Agarwal got hit on the head during the net session and Mayank Agarwal was ruled out because of concussion. And that's where KL Rahul was asked to open. He played a brilliant, brilliant knock of 50 in the first test match. Then he went on to score 100 in Lords. And remember after that, he went on to score 100 later on in uh, in Durban as well, in the later on that year. So you have to say KL Rahul, the overseas batter in test matches, have been solid for Team India. Uh, you know, he's given them that solidity in the recent past in overseas test matches. But consistency is a factor because he scored some runs, but then he has had 
couple of failures. He's not really been able to carry on those hundreds and he's not been able to build on those hundreds. Now, when we talk about some of the greatest players, they've been always been able to build on those hundreds. They score a hundred, then they back it up with a bigger score, then they back it up with another bigger score as well. They keep that purple patch elongated for the longer period of time. But with KL Rahul, that's not been the case. He scores a hundred, he looks extremely good, then he has this string of failures, then he scores 100 later on again. That's something which India has not been really pleased about KL Rahul with, and that's why KL Rahul will have to change as well. Now, let's talk about bowling combination of Team India for that one-off test match, isn't it? Because we have to consider it's just a one-off test match, so you'll have to put in your best resources, and you'll have to be on an A game, because if you have one bad session or one bad day, your WTC final will be taken away from it. It's, it's unlike any series in test cricket that it's a one-off test match, especially getting acclimatized to conditions are going to be so important for Team India, because Remember, a lot of these teams will be playing, a lot of these players will be playing the IPL final till June first week. So after that, they'll have very few days to make it to the make it to, make it to, make it to England and get ready for WTC final. Just a period of five, six, five to six days to get ready and to get ready and to go for the WTC finals, which will also include some of the Australian players as well who are currently there in the IPL. So it's going to be an interesting thing. Now, as, as I already mentioned about the spinners, India will be likely to go with four fast bowlers, which we have seen previously. India doing English conditions as well. That's one of the reasons why they have Shardul Thakur because Shardul Thakur could be that all-rounder fast bowling option, maybe ahead of someone like a Ravichandran Ashwin. Now you might be all thinking, why not a Ravichandran Ashwin? So it'll all depend on how English summers are because if if it is a drier or a hotter June in England, you will see someone like a Ravichandran Ashwin being preferred over a Shardul Thakur. But if it's a if it's a wet summer in England, as we see in early parts of summer in England, it tends to be extremely cold. It tends to be a lot more wet. It, it, you know, it, it's going to be raining a lot more. There you want something like a Shardul Thakur. One of the mistakes which India did in the Southampton uh, test match in WTC final of 2021 was to go in with two, three paces and just two, and two spinners. And both the spinners did not really get anything out of that pitch. And Bumrah had a very much of an off test match there as well. So India couldn't really generate anything much of, out of their fast bowlers. Hence, you let the lead be conceded by India in that match from New Zealand. So, here India would want to correct that mistake, maybe going with Shardul Thakur, because remember, Shardul Thakur has played those match winning knocks in England. Remember the knock which he played in Oval, which, which was very, very vital for Team India in the larger scheme of things in you know, getting the level on that series. But now, if you talk about Shardul Thakur, the batter, uh, he's done well in patches, but as a bowler as well, he'd like to really step up. Remember his knock in Gabba as well, which Team under pressure with Washington. So, the, so he's been he's played some important knocks for Team India in overseas conditions. And he's, a, he's much more a capable batter to do it as well. So against the Australian team, which will be much of pace, which will really ball and pepper bouncers at him, he really enjoys the pace coming onto the ball. So there's not a lot of ballers like Anderson or Stuart Broad who could be balling at the nagging line you know, with the swing coming in. But you will see a you will really see Charles Tucker enjoy batting a Pat Cummins, a Mitchell Stark, or a Hazelwood more than a Anderson or Broad. So this is where it's going to hold advantage for Team India to maybe slightly consider someone like a Shadul Thakur, but that doesn't mean you take completely take out Ravichandran Ashwin. In, 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 for India in the recent past, you will have to admit that Ravichandran Ajay has been India's overseas number one spinner, primarily because of the batting skill set and also his, also his ability to pick up wickets nowadays in overseas soil. Now, if you look at England 2021, or even for that matter in Australia in 2021, Jadeja really came good. Jadeja really came good as an overseas spinner. He's really improved his trades. In 2021, later on that year, when India toured South Africa, there was not a certain player called Ravindra Jadeja in the squad. And that's one of the reasons why, even despite of India taking the lead in the series, India really lost the series because India did not have the batting ability of Jadeja number seven. And also, that balling ability to come in and ball, keep building pressure from one end and tie one end up completely. So, for Team India, it's going to be important that India might prefer a Ravindra Jadeja that also gives them a left-hand floating option on days where they can send Javin Jadeja at number 5. He's done the job for Team India in Test matches in the recent past to be batting in number 5. So, definitely Ravindra Jadeja is a lock-in at number 7. It's just going to be between Ravindra Ravindra and Ashwin and also between Shardul Thakur to take the number 8 spot. And the three fast bowlers here, definitely in Mohamed Shami and Mohamed Siraj is a go-ahead in the third spot. Most likely, it could be Jail that will not cut, considering their extra bit of left hand angle and his ability to swing the ball up front. He could be a phenomenal new ball baller because he balls a nagging line, especially with David Warner, Usman Khawaja, just to drive them up front. You know, he could be that X factor or a wild card in that test match because his ability in swinging conditions, especially for a domestic format, is is his consistency, his temperament is phenomenal. Just to add to that, his accuracy has been phenomenal as well. So 
He is an experienced cameraman who's been he's been grilling it out in the domestic circuit, playing in all sorts of conditions. He led Sorashra to another Jonji Trophy. At the same time, his experience will come in handy in comparison with Umesh Yadav, who's not been really having a great time, especially when it comes to his bowling with him. And also, we have to consider Umesh Yadav is now coming to a stage in his career where you can see it's coming to a twilight end to his career as well. So that could be the top. Uh, that could be the bowling team for you, where you have four paces and one spinner. And now let's talk about wicket keeping. You will have a Kona Bharat most likely, or else a KL Rahul. That's going to be a toss up between that, them both at number six. Then you have Ajit K. Rahul at number five, a Virat Kohli, a Chitesh at number three. Then you'll have Shomani Kiran Rohit Sharma opening. Now, if you look at that squad as well, uh, you can see that India are very clear with the batters they're going with. You'll say Rohit Sharma, Shomani Kiran, Chitesh Abuja, Virat Kohli, and Ajit K. Rahane. These are going to be your number, your five batters who will be your top five. And alongside that, KL Rahul at wicket keeping. And most likely Ravinder Jareja at number seven as a spinner, sole spinner, and then a four fast bowlers. So this is going to be India's WTC squad and probably playing 11 for that match. This is about it from us, guys. Thank you for watching this video because you know, it's, it's always going to be important for Team India as well to you know, really get things done very quickly before WTC final get a plan set out. Now the countdown really begins and possibly India's first ICC trophy after a decade might be really beckoning Team India in OL and India will be really hoping they get their hands on the WTC final because India really dominated cricket over the last seven years in test format and it's about time India really gets their hand on the test meets in OL uh, on, on possibly on June, uh, on June 11th or June 12th. So guys, thank you for watching and remember to subscribe to the channel. Also follow us on Instagram for all the latest sporting updates. And do not forget to check out our courses as well, which we offer on Mad About Sports. The link is on the description. If you're an aspiring an analyst or football or a cricket analyst, do check it out. We are in collaboration with Rajasthan Royals as well. So it's going to be some exciting time for you if you're an aspiring analyst. Think, take care and have a good time, all of you. Bye-bye.